In this video, I'm going to talk to you about continental drift and tectonic plates. My goal for you by the end of this video is that you should be able to answer the following questions. What are tectonic plates? How do they move? And what happens when they move? Before we go any further though, just a quick refresher about planetary structure. Our planet, every planet actually we think, is made of layers. The Earth's center is called the core. You're looking at approximately 6,000 degrees Celsius down there. Moving out from there, the next major layer is the mantle. The top layer of the planet, where we hang out, is called the crust. With that in mind, let's get started with continental drift. In 1912, a German scientist named Alfred Wegener published a book in which he theorized that at one point, way back in the Earth's history, we're talking hundreds of millions of years ago, all of the continents were connected. His proof was that the shape of the continent seemed to fit, especially places like South America and West Africa. In different continents, he found the same types of rocks in the ground. Even fossils in the ground in different continents around the world were actually of the same species. Unfortunately, very few people agreed with Wegener because he couldn't explain how the continents moved from being all together to what they were in 1912. Poor Alfred. I say that because he was actually onto something. Eventually, the geographic and scientific communities would come to endorse the theory that there was once a supercontinent called Pangaea. Over millions of years, the continents broke apart, crashed into each other a few times, ended up moving around into the configuration that we would recognize today. The process that you're watching in this video is what one of the models that they think it could have been. The abbreviation here in the bottom left corner means million years before present. The reason why people liked this theory is that it had an explanation for how the continents moved. Their answer was tectonic plates. The idea is that the surface of the planet, called the crust, is broken up into a number of pieces or plates that are giant beds of rock upon which the land masses and oceans rest. So when these plates start moving, or changing shape, the continents go along for the ride. The Earth's crust is made up of a whole bunch of tectonic plates. You can see them labeled here. The misleading thing about this image, though, is that they all seem stationary. The reality is that they are, to some degree, moving and changing. And we're going to look at how. There are three ways that tectonic plates move divergent, convergent, and transform. In all three cases, the movement is caused by the action of the mantle below the plate. So let's start with divergent. During and after World War II, researchers started getting data that supported the theory of tectonic plates. Underwater radar readings called sonar of the floor of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans revealed that different sections of the ocean floors were actually different ages. This map shows some of that data. Please pause the video and take a closer look. You probably notice that the youngest sections of the ocean floor are all in lines around the planet. These lines actually match the boundaries of the tectonic plates. You probably also notice that the newest sections of ocean floor are quite, well, relatively speaking, young, created in the last 10 million years. In fact, as we shall soon see, we believe that these oceans are still growing, and they're actually creating as much as 5 centimeters of new ocean floor every year. To figure out why this is happening, we need to go beneath the Earth's surface and into the mantle, and look at something called mantle convection. The heat from the core and the lower mantle create an outward convection current that pushes the upper mantle towards the crust. The hot mantle reaches the bottom of the crust and is forced to either side by the current coming up behind it. As the mantle moves under the crust, it cools and falls back down towards the core, creating an inward convection current. As it falls, it begins to heat up again and will actually rejoin this upward convection current. So you can imagine mantle moving along these currents in an endless cycle. 
Now, it gets interesting for us when a convection current's peak is in line with an underwater location where two tectonic plates meet. When the mantle turns in either direction under the Earth's crust, the current actually pulls the two plates apart, creating a crack in the Earth's crust. The magma that is riding these currents rises up to fill the gap left between the plates. That magma is cooled right away by the water, and that creates, or turns into, new sea floor. The process at divergent plates is called sea floor spreading. Geographers call the lines where these two plates meet a mid-oceanic ridge. Now, if I had a bigger budget for these videos, I would try to create something that looks like this. Here you can see the mantle convection pulling apart the two plates, allowing magma to come up and form new sea floor. It's a pretty cool graphic. I think National Geographic deserves the credit. Um, wait a second. Yeah, I think we have a problem. If tectonic plates are growing or spreading apart somewhere on the planet, how come the planet's surface area isn't getting bigger? We have seafloor spreading, literally creating new surface on the Earth, but the planet stays the same size. How is that possible? Well, the answer is that something has got to give. While some plates separate, others come crashing together. And those are called convergent plates. Now let's focus on the sides of this image for a second. Do you see what's happening? Where plates converge, one plate is being pushed under the other. It's happening here, and it's happening here. This being pushed under also helps contribute to the inward mantle convection current. This is why the Earth isn't growing, or the surface area of the Earth isn't growing. C4 spreading pushes plates out. Those plates come into contact with other plates, and some pretty amazing things happen. When two plates collide, one gets pushed under the other. The places on the planet where tectonic plates converge are called subduction zones. Here is the subduction zone when an oceanic plate meets a continental plate. Because the oceanic plate is heavier, it is driven down beneath the continental plate. Now, from our previous slides, we would see the mantle convection happening here. The crust that descends into the mantle begins to melt and flows into the mantle here. That's how the Earth's surface stays the same size. As more crust is created at divergent plates, other crust is melted away at convergent plates. Some of this melted crust, however, can rise up through the continental crust to form volcanic mountains or volcanic mountain ranges. Another consequence of subduction is earthquakes. If the movement between the two crusts, here and here, is smooth, there are many small earthquakes that can cause little damage. You can think of it as rubbing your palms together slowly without pressing your hands together very hard. The earthquakes might not even be felt by people on the surface. In some places on Earth, however, like British Columbia, the plates are pushing against each other with such force that they aren't moving at all. Try rubbing your hands together while pressing them against each other very hard. Before, when your hands were moving slowly without pressure, they could move in small or big movements. When you press your hands together with force and try and rub them, if they do move, they are only big movements. The same principle applies to tectonic plates. Tremendous pressure and tension build up between two plates that are pressed tightly against each other. Eventually, this pressure will be released, and when it is, the movement is large, resulting in devastating earthquakes that can register as high as 8 or 9 on the Richter scale. When two converging plates are both continental plates, we still have our subduction zone there, but the situation is a little bit different. Both plates are roughly the same density, so neither one experiences subduction the way ocean plates do. Instead, the plates push into each other and continue to put pressure on each other and the Earth's crust. Try pressing your fingertips on one hand against the fingertips of your other. Eventually, your fingers will shoot out away from you or fold down towards you. 
With tectonic plates, the Earth's crust shoots up. The rock formations on the surface of the two plates come together and rise up to form mountain ranges. The Himalayas are an example. They were formed when the Indian plate and Eurasian plate smashed together about 50 million years ago. As we've learned here, those plates continue to exert pressure on each other, which means the rock continues to rise. Right now, the Himalayan mountains rise by an average of 2 centimeters every year. The good news is that if you or someone you know is planning to climb Mount Everest, even if you wait 15 years to do it, it will only have grown about a foot taller. The final type of plate movement is called transform. When two plates meet at a transform boundary, they slide alongside one another. Similar to subduction zones, this can happen smoothly with many small earthquakes, or the plates can be too tight together and hold on to tension for a long time, releasing it in sudden earthquake events that run from 5.5 to 7.5 on the Richter scale. An example of one of these transform boundaries is the San Andreas Fault running through California, where the North American Plate and the Pacific Plate are actually sliding past each other. Well, that does it. In this video, we've looked at what tectonic plates are, we've looked at how they move, and we've looked at what happens when they move. And just a quick recap on that last one, the answer is new crust is added to the surface of the Earth, old crust is melted away, and then we have earthquakes, mountains, and volcanoes. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.